Well, hello everybody. Welcome, welcome to Frankfurt. Uh, we are going to be flying to Amsterdam Schiphol today. I'm not sure that we've ever done this particular route. I don't think we have. We're going to do our best to do it in the Airbus A320neo. I'm not sure how well it's going to go. Uh, this I have not yet done a flight in this aircraft. This is the uh, A32NX project. Uh, it's as yet unnamed. We're looking at a couple of names. Uh, maybe um, improved aircraft uh, simulation. Or um, one of the other ones that, that were suggested. Wait, let me look these up real quick. There is a link to the Discord if you hit exclamation point aircraft, or air, exclamation point uh, plane, I think. <clears throat> so they are working on an improvement to the stock A320neo that comes with uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I'm very excited to be looking at what's going on here. We're going to take a look at some of the things that they've already done. Um, let me see for, uh, possible names here. Looks like improved aircraft simulations, Lintu or OSSL are our leader. Fossil. Open source study level A320. And hello, hello, angelic bird. Um, welcome to the stream. We're going to do our best not to, you know, kill the aircraft today. Uh, I can't promise anything though, because it is Microsoft Flight, and it's still mostly a stock aircraft. Uh, but we're going to try and get this thing ready from cold and dark, and definitely can't promise. Um, <clears throat> a lot of things are still inoperative. My checklist going here. All right, let's get this thing going. Uh, yes, but let's find out what happens. Exactly. That is our way of doing things here on Air Rack Attack Airlines. Matter of fact, uh, once we get going, I'm going to have a little bit of a thing to uh, let you guys listen to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to trigger it manually this time. I'm going to try and find a way to uh, send it... I'm going to try and find a way to send it uh, automatically through the aircraft. But first, let's go ahead and get this bird turned on. Let's get her ready to go. All right, battery one and two coming on. Um, that's inoperative. Okay, cool. Ground power. External uh, fuel pumps all off. And we're going to have to load our fuel. So today it looks like our flight plan says we need 12,692 pounds because there is no kilograms. Microsoft, please, give me kilograms. All right, so we need a total of 12,692 pounds of fuel. Close enough, 12,663. If, if 30 pounds of fuel crashes us, I'm blaming the sim. I'm taking no responsibility. <laughs> All right, so uh, it looks like our payload is supposed to be 36.8 tons with 160 passengers. And our total weight 
should be our takeoff weight should be 145.6. Five point seven. That's close enough. That is good for me. All right. So that's our uh, loading. I think it should be good. Go with it. All right. So that's fuel loaded. APU fire test is inoperative. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and start. Now, that does start faster than it should. Also, this is new. This is added by the uh, by the team here. Actually, I'm not sure if that one is. Let's see, where's my AP? That is added by the uh, A32 NX team. Oh, thank you so much for cheering and bit. I, I don't know if I saw the, uh, the alert pop out. Or hear it but if you didn't hear it i apologize so so much and i hope that you'll forgive me uh i've had to play with a few things trying to get flight sim to work so if something's not working please let me know if you didn't get an alert uh i'm sorry and i will try and fix it so so much for those five bits those do help they do add up quite a bit more than you would expect all right cockpit lights and mcdews i mean mostly look good i'm, I'm not worried about anything here um all right flaps lever should be matching ecam and speed brakes retracted probe and window heat to auto i don't need anything unless there's some massive ice buildup uh apu bleed on my apu bubble yet no why not what what is taking okay there it goes I was gonna say, what's taking so long on that APU? Yep. All right. APU on. If you bleed on air conditioning panel, no white. Generator one and two fault lights. I did skip something. Conditioning panel, no white. Cross bleed set auto. Air conditioner temperature. I'm not really gonna worry about. Plus, it's not modeled all inoperative they haven't gotten around to it yet they do plan on making a lot of this stuff work i don't know if the air conditioning is quite going to be something that they do uh generator one and two fault light on all other lights off external power off ventilation off that's preliminary pre-flight complete all right now let's the deers are inoperative and thus already aligned strobe lights set auto Uh, wing lights on, Navin logo, system one or two, although they put them on. The rest of these are not modeled, so nothing I can do there. Radios are all on by default, nothing I can do about them. Fire tests are inoperative. Fuel pumps all on. Here we go. Perfect. And now we get to configure our McDo. All right. Initials lies. EDDF to EHAM. It all looks pretty good. Wind page is not modeled. Flight plan. All right. So this is where we get to have fun. Okay. So I should be good to Maroon. And then from Maroon... So airways Yankee 152 
terrible. I don't want to do this. I want to do it this way. Then we go Zulu. No, we do not. We go Tango 281. Lima 604. Tango 281. Tango 281 from uh, Hotel Mike Mike is correct. Get off at Nork. Well, I mean, it's mostly okay. We'll just go with it the way it wants to do it. Fuck. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I I know I'm getting I'm getting a little defeated here. I'm just tired of fighting with Microsoft Flight, thinking it's harder than I am. Cost index today is going to be twenty one. Uh, looks like it's already got our V speeds plugged in. Flaps are going to be two slash up. I don't know. Zero point four. I don't know. There's there's no performance calculator here for me to reference. I'm going to go 64 degree flex. Because, again, I have nothing to compare to. Thank you so much for the extra cheer. I am sorry I didn't see that again. Uh, I'm sitting here with my flight plan up on the other page, and I, it's it's harder for me to see what's going on. I need to just get this done so we can take off and I can pay attention. All right, so we're going to be traveling to... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. going to work. Okay, fine, fine. We're good. We're good. All right. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So McDo is as set up as it's going to be. All right. Let's go to our pushback procedures. Altimeter set. Ground service. No, oh, no. Wait. Back. Go. Oh, um, in Frankfurt Atis. Gonna, gonna aid us me there, buddy. Um, back to clearance. On services. Where, where, where'd my aid us go? Ring for aid us. Hello, computer. All right, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to load it from here. Say 10, 13, 25. 10, 13, good enough. All right, so I'm not going to request the rest. We're going to take care of ourselves from here on in. <laughs> All right, so flight directors both on... <clears throat> uh, FCU speed heading and altitude should be uh, speed and heading should be altitude dash should be set uh, uh, should be dashed altitude should be set to ATC cleared which our initial climb is restricted to 5,000 feet while on our departure uh, we'll expect our filed 32,000 I think 10 minutes after departure. And a skid and nose wheel steering, both not modeled and on. Uh, switching panel, all normal, also not modeled. Transponder set squat code. We're not going to worry about it today. Beacon set on. And we are going to try and do this. Yes, it's working. There's a pushback. All right, so I need to pop up a... Not on here. Uh oh. Over 
here. Right, so we need to basically right back. Right back over November 7th. Also, I'm sorry for all the weird camera angles here, but this thing does not like to let go of the scroll wheel when I'm no longer on it. Can we, can we go back? Like... Can we, can we push back, guys? Come on, I don't want to have to call ATC for their terrible pushback. Ground. Where's my pushback? Let's try going for clearance. Frank for clearance delivery, Airbus Alpha Sierra X Ray 320 ready to copy IFR clearance to skip hull. Airbus Alpha Sierra X Ray 320 is cleared to skip hull airport as filed. Take off runway 7 right climb and maintain 13,000 feet. Departure frequency is really? 27 decimal 6 clock 4266. Alright, we'll clear to 13,000. Seven zero five. West taxi. Frankfurt ground Airbus Alpha Sierra X ray three two zero with X ray ready to taxi IFR. Airbus Alpha Sierra X ray three two zero taxi to and hold short of runway seven right using taxiway November seven November eight Lima one zero Lima one one cross runway seven center Mike two four Mike Mike two nine -er. Contact tower on one two seven decimal three three when ready. Oh boy. Taxiway November 7, November 8, Lima 10, Lima 11, cross runway 7, center mic 24, mic mic 29, or Airbus 320. Okay, November 7, November 8, Lima 10, Lima 11. Number eight, eleven. Number ten. Why are you taking that winding up those. on seven? <laughs> I'm so confused. Why are you having me take Lima 10? Lima 11? Those both line up onto runway 7 center. Eleven. Mike 24, Mike. That is the dumbest. Okay. Oh. Well, 
Okay. West pushback. Frankfurt ground Airbus Alpha Sierra X Ray 320 requesting pushback. Well, I'll try to follow that. Dumb as it is. Okay, where's my pushback? It is on. Engine mode to ignition, engine two starting. What? <laughs> Did you guys see that? Pop this out, put it over there. Hopefully that's not what you guys see. Okay, cool. Let's get these Leap 1 Alpha engines going. Get that buzz saw going. I feel like you guys don't know how cars work. Cars and aircraft, they move different. Cars, they don't sit in the air like that. All right, let's get this thing to 20% into rotation, or N1 rotation, pardon me. There goes our PTU bark. Start engine one. Go ahead and stop the pushback. Frankfurt ground, Airbus Alpha Sierra X-Ray 320 requesting the end of pushback. Airbus Alpha Sierra X-Ray 320 request to end pushback received. All right, and that looks like we've got a positive start on engine one. Go ahead and switch this back to normal. APU bleed off. Round spoilers armed. Lap set for takeoff. Position two. Pitch trim. Oh, that's not mine. And call it that. Good enough. Recall is inoperative. Yay. Well then. Let's just continue, shall we? Engine and wing anti-ice not needed. APU master off. Taxi checklist. Let's get our nose wheel lights on to the taxi position. Which for some reason illuminates the cockpit. All right. Well, that's fair enough. Uh, parking brake off. And then we are going to come right. November 7. November 8. A little fast. Number 7, November 8.
I think I'm right in the middle of where I'm supposed to be. Oh, I should have briefed this better. You will get points quickly enough. They are not difficult. I don't know why it's doing this to me. So I'm supposed to Lima 11. I'm pretty sure this is not a real world taxi procedure at all. Lima 11, cross 7 center. It did not tell me to hold. Cross seven center. Mike two four. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm not supposed to taxi on the runway unless absolutely necessary, and even then, really only supposed to cross it. Mike two four. Hold on. Okay. On the mic. I'm having to look at my charts while I'm doing this because this is a really weird method of taxi. I head down to Mike 29. Why is it yelling at me to put my lever to climb? Airbus. Please. Sobo. Sobo, please. See, this is what I'm talking about. Like, Microsoft Flight. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the secret that nobody wants to tell you. Okay? Microsoft Flight, everybody everybody gushes about how good it is and how beautiful. And it is good, and it is beautiful. But here's the thing, it's good. At what's on the box. Box says that it's the most beautiful, it's got realistic weather simulation, it's got ortho on every tile, the whole world is generated not with autogen but with actual uh, photorealistic tiles, and it absolutely is. It says it's the best thing ever for VFR flying, and it absolutely is. If you're not using it for VFR, if you're using it for IFR, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, this is not made for airliners yet. Or, more correctly, there are no airliners made for this yet. Once we get, like, some PMDG or uh, this, this... We're not sure what to call it. I liked the name TrueBus. Um, but we don't know what to call it yet. We've played around with improved aircraft systems, um, OSSL, the, the open source study level Airbus A320neo. We've toyed around with flight design. Um, and then there was a there was a Finnish word for bird that I can't remember off the top of my head. All right, Mike two nine.
spark break set. Go ahead and contact tower. All right, request takeoff and IFR. Break for tower Airbus Alpha Sierra X-ray 320 at runway 7 right ready for takeoff IFR to skip home. Airbus Alpha Sierra X-ray 320 cleared for takeoff. Knowledge takeoff clearance. Cleared for takeoff runway 7 right Airbus Alpha Sierra X-ray 320. Let's make sure we've gone through our checklist brakes. Auto brakes set max even though it had it on then it turned it off. Brakes checked, flight controls checked. FMA, nav and climb, SRS should not be on yet. But it is. Auto brake max, terrain on N. Balls. Not. Ecam no blue. Or takeoff checklist complete. All right, let's line up. I'll actually do my best here to actually follow the ATC since. Already, I'm not able to, to do the sim brief. It just doesn't want to let me enter my flight plan. Because airways are not modeled, even though it automatically generates them. Okay, throttles to 50%. Stabilized. Like set. You are very specific about that flex tip. Forward. Let that forward pressure go. B1. Rotate. Positive rate, gear up. He checked, flaps one. Flaps zero. Autopilot on. Contact center, one, two, seven, decimal six. Oh, I forgot to sing. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to go ahead and play our safety briefing, even though we're already in the air. This is dumb, but I'm going to do it anyway. This will be the next six minutes. But since very little of what that video tells you will actually save your lives, I'm going to do it instead. Here's the big thing to remember. If we crash or make an emergency landing, statistically speaking, 95% of you will survive. If it's a serious crash, 55% of you will survive. So if this plane is going down, concentrate. Because your life may depend on some smart decisions. Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen within the first 3 minutes and the last 8 minutes of flight. So that's when it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away and stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are over the wings closest to the emergency exits. If you're not in one of those right now, here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where your nearest exit is. Now count the rows between you and that exit. If the cabin was full of smoke, or upside down, or full of smoke and upside down, how would you get to that exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing that right now. Now look at your seatbelt. I know all of you know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you lose your shit right now. It's common for people in emergency stress situations to try and open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like a seatbelt on your car. 
to take a moment to imagine yourself lifting that flap in an emergency. In fact, do it right now just to get used to the motion. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than crashes. In the event of something like an engine fire, we need to get you all off the plane in about 90 seconds. This means you need to leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins and get off the damn plane in a quick and orderly manner. Those bags will bring the evacuation to a virtual halt. My first officer and I will be trying to get off this plane, and the last thing we want is to be cockpit blocked by your roll on. Now, you're probably well aware there's a life jacket under your seat, but forget about it. They're less likely to save your life than those little airline cars. Sure, there was a famous 2009 emergency water landing on the Hudson, but there were boats on hand immediately, and nobody actually needed the life vests. There was a flight that ditched in the Caribbean in 1970 where 40 lives were likely saved by the vests, but there was Country also one off the coast in Ethiopia in 1996, in which many passengers put them on too early and couldn't get out Climb of the and maintain flight level two tree zero, Better Airbus than way, if we replaced those life vests with a box of chocolates, it wouldn't alter your survival odds. Let's take a second to talk about those oxygen masks. Here's the thing. If we lose cabin pressure at a fairly low altitude, no big deal. You can breathe just fine. If we lose cabin pressure at freezing altitude, you can't. If that happens, here's what I'm required to do by law. I'm going to push the nose of the plane into an emergency descent that's going to feel like a roller coaster drop and it's going to scare the crap out of you. But it's not dangerous. I practiced. Also by law, I need to notify air traffic control as well as the airline and I need to do all that before I can get on the microphone and tell you what the hell is going on. So don't be surprised if you don't hear from me for a bit. I'm just doing my job, and you're gonna be fine. For those of you who don't manage to get your masks on in time, you'll probably pass out and then wake up in a minute or two when I get the plane to a lower altitude. You wanna know what the biggest danger is? The biggest danger is actually that your luggage or those duty-free bottles you purchased to put in the overhead compartment will fall out open it and hit someone on the head. There are actually several thousand reported injuries from this every year in the United States alone. By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turbulence. So one could easily make the case that we should, we should be handing you a helmet and skip the seatbelts. Another big risk is the drink cart. Seriously. It weighs over 100 kilos when fully loaded, and every year, passengers get their elbows, knees, and feet broken when the drink cart slams into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why haven't airlines put some safety padding on the drink cart? I don't know. Maybe because you keep screaming at the attendants for your chicken being bland, or your drink not being bland. Same goes for spill-proof coffee in teapots and cups of fluids. Every year, some poor passengers get hot coffee or tea in their crotch, when there's a bit of turbulence, but until the airlines fix this, I'm afraid you're on your own. Now, you're probably wondering how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't get the AV system or the latch on your tray to work properly. To be honest, we sometimes wonder that as well. The stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is 1 in 11 million, according to the Harvard School of Public Health 2006 study, so you're far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark and it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20% fewer people flew. But because more people made driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after 9-11, just in the US. Just a little reminder that we'll probably keep the seatbelt sign on for nearly the entire flight, because our flight crew doesn't want to be bothered in the galley and they definitely don't like trying to squeeze by you in the aisles. That or I forgot. Either way. Anyway, please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and a barely editable meal, and then leave the tray on your table, making it nearly impossible for you to squeeze out of your chair and into the toilet. Looking forward to flying the salty skies with you again. All right, I, I spent entirely too long. Now, I have to admit, that was not something I came up with myself. 
It is an alteration to a popular YouTube video. I'm sure you all know it. Um, I don't want to sit here and claim credit for coming up with all of those statistics or most of that uh, script. I legitimately copied that from another YouTube video and I just did it in my own voice so that the whole point is for it to sound like the captain and I'm the captain of Air Rack Attack Airlines. Um, so I, I did that just to fit with the airline. <laughs> I'm I'm glad that you liked it. Um, I absolutely was in love. Three two zero. Um, I absolutely fell in love with it when I first heard it, and I've had this idea of trying to play it as a safety briefing since I first heard it. My first thought when I heard that was, I have to have that. Since I have my own livery, why shouldn't I have my own safety briefing? And that contains both a lot of real factual information and a lot of um, hilarious phrasing. And I wanted to go ahead and use it. So I want to give credit to... Go ahead and find who it was. I want to make sure that I don't lie to anybody here. Rethinking Tourism on YouTube. I think it was actually uh, delivered by Doug Lansky, was the original speaker. Um, however, I recorded my own voice. I don't know if Doug actually wrote the script or if he just performed it. So I'm putting his name in there anyway because I would rather give too much credit than not enough. That's just the kind of person I am. Now, one thing that I, I, I don't like about Flight Sim ATC, and I haven't liked this about any Flight Sim. Um, it was this way in FSX, definitely this way in X-Plane. They, they give you basically step climbs. Um, now, normally what you would do is... Um, You'd basically plan your performance so that you would arrive at your destination or at your your destination altitude in just one smooth climb instead the way they have us doing it is we're going to cl climb like a bat out of hell to 13,000 then we're going to climb like a bat out of hell to 23,000 then we're going to climb like a bat out of hell to 32,000 and we're just going to keep doing this porpoising that's not good uh, i can't turn off the seat belts um, it's not good for the plane, it's not good for fuel efficiency, it's not good for the passengers. Nobody likes that. So, I'm not sure why the ATC always decides to do this here. Basically, normally you would get clearances to certain areas, and then how fast you get there is up to you. They, they would tell you, you know, your charts would tell you how high to be at what point. Um... <clears throat> I'm curious if that's real world. It would not surprise me, because that's definitely not how it works in X-Plane. The Tolis doesn't do that, where uh, when you get close enough for it to start turning, it deletes the rest of the, the line indicating the leg. It's also overshooting. The, the autopilot is not planning the turn well. Climb and maintain flight level 380. Climb and maintain 380. Normally, they won't micromanage you this much, from what I understand. Um, now, I am very, very excited to see ATC getting released on POSCON. I'm, I'm waiting for that so that we can fly some Airbus on POSCON. Langen Center, 118.75. 118.75. Three two zero. 
Langen Center Airbus Alpha Sierra X-ray 320 is at flight level 325, climbing flight level 380. Airbus Alpha Sierra X-ray 320, Langen Center, continue to Biggie as planned. That is what's next. Oh, boy. That is what's next. We're just really sl We are flying drunk. This, this bus is drunk. The Airbus is drunk. That's that's the only the only thing that I can <clears throat> that I can guess is it, the bus is drunk. Um, so we're just doing our best here. That's that's all we can do. But. Um, but yeah, I am not impressed with the flight model. I'm not impressed with the autopilot. I'm not impressed with basically anything in Microsoft Flight outside of exactly what they were saying was good. The, the, the weather is amazing. I am absolutely impressed with the weather. The uh, GA aircraft, fantastic. Some are a little wonky, but... For the most part, they fly like GA aircraft. You get low to the ground, you do feel ground effect, you feel thermals, you get uh, cliff effects, everything. Like the, the the atmospheric modeling, the the flight dynamics of most things are great. The Airbus here, it bounces. It bounces like it's GA. I'm not even kidding. Uh, you'll you'll probably see it when we hit the ground. I'll I'll get a nice low landing rate, but it won't matter. It'll still bounce. It'll bounce like instead of being fifty tons, it's more like one and a half. Um, the ILS I have trouble getting it to work. It really does not want to work. And I don't know why. I don't know why it's being such a pain. And it is. It is a terrible pain. I wish I could uh, explain just how fucked it is. But, you know, like, the things that it tells you it is good at. And that's the thing. If you watch most, like, YouTubers and streamers, they're telling you how great it is and everything. And they're sitting there flying their TBMs and their, their Citation Intercontinentals and everything like they're they're flying all these ga and and small business style uh, aircraft but if you stop and you think about it and you really consider what kind of a channel you're looking at you'll realize hey wait a minute you've you've maybe flown in 10 ga or smaller than airliners in the last year but Microsoft Flight releases, and all of a sudden you've done nothing but GA. Really look at what you're seeing in, 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 in what people are saying. Look at their history and look at what's out of context. What's What sounds weird, right? They're not showing any airliners because the airliners are not good. Um, I haven't had a chance yet to watch, but I did see that V1 Simulation put out a video about this specific aircraft. Um, obviously, mine has a couple of upgrades. Not a lot. I think one that, that deals with the fuel efficiency. And also, uh, a lot of these ECAM pages are modeled. Um, some of them aren't, but the controls are all modeled. Um... Like the doors. This this page did not exist before. So, um, you know, my thanks go out to the A32NX team. We don't have a name for it yet. We're actually still working on a name. Um, I suggested Improved Aircraft Simulations, IAS, uh, which is, I thought was clever because it's also indicated airspeed, something that 
people in flight simulation, they're going to know. They're going to know that that's going to be a familiar sound to them. They're used to saying IAS or indicated. Um, <clears throat> so it's going to be something that's easy to remember. Unfortunately, it does not seem to be very popular. Uh, leading suggestions so far are OSSL, which is the open source um, open source study level. Um, light designs and oh, what is that word? There's a there's a Finnish word. I need to find it. I can't pull it up real quick. R. Lintu. Lintu. And so far, it looks like Fleet Designs is in first place with 35 votes. Uh, second place is actually uh, IAS, Improved Aircraft Systems. And third is Lintu with 20 votes. I'm sorry, no. Uh, first place is Fleet Design, second place is OSSL, and third place is IAS. So, um, yeah, FD, OSSL, IAS. Those are the, those are the three leaders. 35, 31, and 30. We have five votes for other, but it doesn't actually display what the others are, so not much we can do there. Airbus 320 descend and maintain flight level 320. Send and maintain 320. Descend and maintain flight level 320, Airbus 320. Come on, descend. There you go, Airbus. Thank you. Please don't lawn dart. Please don't lawn dart. Please, why are you lawn darting? Oh, let's bring that nose up a little bit. Let's go 2,000 feet. A minute. Oh dear God. We you do minus two thousand, please. Twenty one hundred. Gauge vertical speed. Stick at twenty one hundred feet per minute. We'll be fine. Am I starting to set? Yes, I am. Uh, apparently. This is not a terribly long flight. We're just going from Frankfurt to Schiphol. Um, there is another stream that I work with that is doing a subathon tonight. And so uh, I don't want to go over time by too much. I had some other things planned I wanted to do in the sim after this flight. Fortunately, I'm not going to be able to do a lot of that because I still have... Let me see me butter. I'm going to try, but like I said, the flight model on this on, on, on this jet is not great. I'm, mm, I'm not thrilled with it. Um, let me see. Oh, they had us go really weird. Where are we? We are inbound to Amson. Under 280 by Norku. Should be. Yeah, I'm going to do my best to butter. Don't get me wrong. I am going to do my best. But, um... Fortunately, that's all I can promise. A little bit faster. I got this. I, I'm going to do my best. Uh, the, the flight model... It, it does weird shit. I'm going to have to turn off the auto throttle. Airbus 320 descend and maintain flight level. 
It's going to maintain 240. Descend and maintain flight level 240 Airbus 32. I'm just going to let it lawn dart. Fuck it. Go for it. Just don't pancake us, please. <laughs> um, I under Flying something like this, I can understand why tragedies like Lion Air happen. You know, um, you just, you get tired of fighting the plane. It, eventually you start to question yourself and wonder whether or not the plane's right. Um, and then you smack into the ground. Or you stall. Bad things happen. Okay, we are inbound to Amson. We are almost right over it. Inbound Norku, and we need to be 280 by then. We're fine. Contact Amsterdam Center on 119 decimal 175. Amsterdam Central 119 175. Good day. Going to 119 decimal 175 Airbus 320. Amsterdam Center Airbus Alpha Sierra X ray 320 is out of flight level 280 for flight level 240. Um, guys. Marku as planned. So, I'm gonna try to do as good as I can, but like, so, the reason why I have to turn off the auto throttle on, uh, approach, there's some kind of an issue where if I add a little thrust, even just a tiny bit when I'm too close to the ground it automatically goes toga and locks in my go around and I can't cancel it without literally turning off the auto throttle um, I am more than capable of hitting toga thrust on my own but um, you know I'm, I'm five feet off the, the runway and then the plane decides to go toga on me when it's too late for toga to do anything. And then the flight model is so wonky that that increase in throttle in a second or two translates immediately into a, like a 1,200 positive feet per minute. Before I can even realize the engines are spooling up, it's already had me come up 10,000 feet, or uh, by 1,000 feet. Um, and that's not really accurate. It takes time for the engines to spool up. It's going to maintain 180 Airbus 8320. Unfortunately, I haven't seen where to put in my call signs or anything yet. So, nothing I can do there. We're just going to be called Airbus 8320. Good news is we're only maybe uh, 20 minutes or so outside of Skipple, maybe 15. And that will be, uh, that'll be it for flying the Airbus. I'm thinking next week I may go back to, uh, X plane for a week and do some in the Tolis. So I can kind of do a side by side. I might do this specific flight in the Tolis just to see the two flights side by side and see how much better and more accurate it is. Because although I will absolutely give Microsoft Flight its dues. Okay, expedite my descent to 180. I don't know why all of a sudden it decided to get slow on me.
we don't have any uh, stricter restrictions, so I'm not sure why they're screaming at me to expedite, but I'm happy to do it. Not yelling at me, but and Mormons approach Q and A. Oh, temperature. Winds are. I have no idea. Two seven zero at two. Trans alt, we're going to say a seven thousand. I'm pretty sure. No, I'm sorry, 3,000. Now, what are you doing? Okay, we're just approaching our target. Thank you so much for more bits. I appreciate that so much. The Senate maintained 16,000. Yes, thank you so much for those bits. They do add up, and I appreciate them so much. Uh, everything that comes into the stream goes back into the stream. So I'm not, like, using the money that comes in through Twitch to go drinking or to order dinner, nothing like that, unless it's absolutely necessary. What everything goes to is paying for more things for the stream, be it rudder pedals or Microsoft flights or uh, new scenery, new Air maps, new airplanes. Clear to our type. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect ILS runway 27 approach via our type transition. Clear to our type Airbus 320. Okay, so we need EHAM 27. LS 20. Approach. Our type tree. Alpha. Our type tree. Correct. R type, cool. I why are you not directing to R type?
There we go. Now you're ready to turn to Arze. Yeah, I don't understand what some of the decisions that this thing makes. It just decided to start rolling right. And that was absolutely not correct. Trying to intercept the line here, not waypoint. Is this not working? Asobo. Gotta talk. You made crap. I went right over that waypoint and still it decided to keep circling to try and nail the waypoint because it hadn't yet intercepted the line to the waypoint. Okay, so I'm gonna bug a little further over try to plot an intercept go ahead and flaps one Try and, and enter under the approach here. Five miles. Only two and a half miles, I'm going to start my turn. Stop zooming out, just because the damn thing's turning. Yeah, see? Start too soon.
There we go. Back on course. Now. We, can we move past our type, please? No? Amsterdam Center Airbus Alpha Sierra X-Ray 320 requesting vector to next waypoint. Airbus 320 continue to D070 turning and following heading 250. 250. Continue to D070 turning and following heading 250 Airbus 320. And maintain 7,000. Descend and maintain 7,000 feet Airbus 320. Stop that. Sir. It's doing something weird here that isn't in my original flight plan. And I don't like it. Wavy watching on the Fire TV. Thank you so much, Wavy. I didn't get to see when that came in because I'm trying to watch this on my map and on my navigation display. It's having me do this weird thing where I come and circle around. That's not in the actual. Next. Direct. Nope. Gonna maintain three thousand feet. Descend and maintain three thousand feet, Airbus three two zero. break Fuck. Airbus 
Decimal four zero five Airbus A320. Hopefully this will get me back on course. Ah, oh. three ten thousand feet on these. Okay, I can fix this. I can fix this. No, I can't. Thought I could. Oh. Nope, oh, definitely can't. Hopefully, we'll find out here in a minute whether or not this thing knows what it's doing. <laughs> Worst case scenario, I can fly this manually. I have faith in my manual flying technique now. I didn't used to, but I do now. All right, we are at 3,000 feet. Perfect. Those out. Arm the LS. Operative. Is it going to turn us? Is it going to turn us? Not going to turn us, is it? Come on, come on, bus. Ah, it's turning. Guys, it's turning. It knows what we're doing. All right. It knows ish what we're doing. It's not very good at doing it. <laughs> Where are you going? No, no. Yes. Okay, we're done. We're gonna...
Alright. Auto throttle off. Turn off this. <laughs> Back up to three thousand. Airbus three two zero descent and maintain two thousand feet. And maintain two thousand feet, Airbus A three two zero. There we are. Two flaps. Positioning in here is awful. Airbus 320, you are eight miles east of Skip Hall. Contact Skip Hall Tower on 118.28 when inbound. Hey. Tower on 118.28, Airbus 320. Skip Hall Tower, Airbus Alpha Sierra X ray 3207 miles east inbound ILS runway 27 approach. Airbus Alpha Sierra X ray 320, Skip Hall Tower. Cleared ILS runway 27 approach. Altimeter 29er, decimal 9er, 2270 at tree. Airbus 320 cleared to land runway 27. Wind 270 at tree. to land runway 27 Airbus 320. Stop! Down. As I say.
100. 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, retard. Existing runway. Airbus three two zero contact ground on one two one decimal nine zero five. One two one decimal nine zero five for Airbus three two zero. Skip Hall Ground Airbus Alpha Sierra X-Ray 320 request taxi to the gate. Airbus Alpha Sierra X-Ray 320 taxi to gate Delta 56 using taxiway November 2 Bravo Alpha Alpha Niner Charlie. Where are we? Number two, Bravo Alpha Alpha Niner Taxi Charlie. Taxi to gate Delta 56 via Taxiway November 2 Bravo Alpha Alpha Niner Charlie Airbus 320. Where the hell is November? Alpha. Okay. Bravo Alpha. I don't know why it lights up my uh, cockpit so much to use my taxi lights. It's like there's no floor in the cockpit. <laughs> Definitely not real world. Delta 
certainly is a lot of Airbuses here. Let's take a look at our external camera because I cannot, for the life of me. Delta 5 6, it is not marked at all. French fur. Five six is actually right here at the end. ourselves nice up perfect back into the cockpit at the parking brake perfect ground services let's go ahead and go through our shutdowns roll out landing lights retracted Point turn offs off, taxi lights off, not that much. Props retracted, APU master set on, start on, train on ND off, brake fan on if wheels are too hot, isn't modeled, probably doesn't work anyway. Yeah, the button's not even there. <laughs> Parking, okay, park brake on, anti-ice off, APU bleed on as soon as it's available. You can turn it on, and when it comes available, it will be turned on. Engine 1 and 2 master can come off as soon as that APU starts. We're not still on rollout. I don't know why it says that. Once that APU gen comes on, we can turn off our engines. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn off engine number one. Then we can request our jetway connection. Skip Hall Ground, Airbus Alpha Sierra X-Ray 320, could you please connect the jetway to the aircraft? Airbus Alpha Sierra X-Ray 320, the jetway is going to be connected. Yes, I know the door is now open. Jetway is being connected. Let's see, now that generator is on, APU bleed is being used. Let's go ahead and turn off engine number two. And it took over thing. Okay. Uh, so what does this tell us? 9.46 departure from EDDF. 10.39 arrival at EHAM. Total time of flight. Flight 52 minutes, 59 seconds. Uh, operational condition time. 52 minutes, 59 seconds of that is at night. Takeoffs at night one. Landings at night one. It doesn't really tell me much. 
go ahead and continue so we can do the rest of our checklist. Uh, runway turn off lights off, wing lights off, beacon off, nav and logo off. Fuel pumps off. Transponder to standby. Fuse dim. I'm not going to worry about that. Brake fan off. We don't even have a brake fan. I don't know why, but we don't. We can, however, turn on and off anti skid. I have no idea why, but we can. Adir's off, which are not modeled. Exit lights. Exterior lights all off, which they were not. Uh, APU bleed off. APU master off. Emergency exit lights are not functional. No smoking lights are not functional. Battery one and two off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Amsterdam, Schiphol. Uh, it is 6.42 local time here where I am. Uh, what it is there, I couldn't tell you. I don't remember. I don't know what it is relative to uh, UTC. So, um, I'm just going to call it here, guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Next week, I think we're going to jump back into X-Plane for a week. And do this same flight again one more time. But we're going to do it a little more real world because we can actually like program our MCDU to follow a real world fi flight plan. So anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for the bits. Thank you for the subs. Thank you for the follows. Uh, thank you for everything you guys do. Even just showing up here, talking, running those commands. Just everything that you do, every time that you interact with the stream, it helps me so, so much. So thank you for being here. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening, and good night.